Today on Quick Tech Tutorials, we check out Cura by Ultimaker. All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna look at Cura by Ultimaker and we're gonna look at it kind of from scratch. So if you're brand new to 3D printing or you're still a novice and you're not really sure uh, what you're doing, this is gonna take you through just getting set up with Cura and some of the basic printer settings. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to take an object that you have and be able to successfully 3D print it. Um, just know 3D printing is a learning curve. Uh, there's a lot of technicalities and stuff that goes on with it as you get more experience with 3D printing. Um, so just be aware that, you know, your first prints may not be perfect, right? You have to play around with settings and learn your printer, learn the materials that you're using. Uh, but this is enough again in this video, just to get you started. All right. So, um, I have Cura downloaded. Um, uh, it's a free program, a slicer program that you can use, um, for a variety of 3d printers and you can download it for free. I have the link in the description below. So feel free to download that if need be. Uh, once you download and open up, this is the program. All right, so I have my printer already loaded, but I'll show you how you can add your printer. So if I click the little drop down arrow here, I'm gonna click add printer. And if you have it connected to your computer, computer or it's connected via a network, it should show up here. In this case, I don't have my printer connected to my laptop, so I'm just gonna click add a non-network 3D printer. And you can see there's tons of the Ultimaker printers, of course. Uh, variety of companies you can scroll through try and find yours if not you could add right a custom scroll up there we go add a custom printer um, but we're using the Creality Ender 3 so I'm gonna scroll down find Creality there it is uh, Creality makes a bunch of good printers um, inexpensive great every entry-level printer um, I have just the regular Ender 3 so I'm gonna select that uh, we can give it a printer name. So I'm just gonna call it Creality Ender 3. And I'll hit add. Uh, the next box that pops up is very important. Just a quick run through here. This width, depth, and height. These are your print volume uh, settings. So this is the maximum uh, area in which you can print an object on your printer. So if you were to print something that was too big or you're printing multiple objects, this will let you know whether or not everything is going to fit within the printed area. Uh, if not, it'll tell you and you won't be able to print uh, what you're trying to print. So generally, you want to leave it as a stock setting. If you're not sure what your print setters, printer settings are, um, you could either see it in your manual that you got, or you could easily look that up just by looking up printer volume for the specific printer that you have. Um, my printer does have a heated bed, so heated bed is checked off already. Um, I'm going to leave everything else the same, even the star G code and NG code. Um, what that is, is pretty much telling the printer what to do in the beginning and what to do when it's finished printing. Uh, you can add to that if you have an automatic bed leveler, uh, if you want to remove a print automatically, or if you want the bed to move, you know, to a certain area when it's done, whatever you want, you can modify that. Uh, we're not going to worry about that right now, though. So I'm just going to leave everything as is, and I'm going to hit next. All right, so now what we're seeing is uh, my print area, right? My print volume. So if I, I have my mouse, if I zoom in and out or roll the mouse wheel, I could zoom in and out. If I hold the mouse wheel down, I could pan. And if I hold down the right click, I can rotate all around. All right. Um, next thing we're going to tweak is just the middle section here. So depending on the type of material you're using, right, there's different brands here. But if you don't see your brand, right, you have just generic ABS, uh, PLA, PETG, TPU. Those are some common print materials. So whichever material you're using, you're going to select. So I'm using PLA. I'll just select that. And my machine has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on it. If yours is different or different than what Cura is telling you, um, you definitely want to change that because your print will be based off of your nozzle diameter size. All right. So I'm going to leave that at 0.4 millimeters as well. All right. Now, 
Let's add an object and start to play around with some print settings. So this little folder in the top left, this is where you can import your file. So generally an STL file, an OBJ file is what we're working here. So we're making a 3D tic-tac-toe game and these are the O's that are gonna be used um, for the game that we're gonna 3D print. Uh, so once you add an object down here is what you could name it and what will be shown on, on the 3D printer or if you're saving it to a card, this will be the file name. So I'll just call it 3D you know, O's, we'll leave it at that. And it's giving me the total uh, print size there. You'll notice now that this message also came up. It's telling me total print time as well as how much material that's gonna be used. That's all based off of the settings. So before we print this, let's just look at some basic settings. All right, so this last little bar up here, you see it's a standard quality and it has this little fan logo, 20%, and these two things are off. Let's click this little arrow and figure out what they are. All right, it gives you several standard printing profiles, like a really high quality, a high quality, kind of a regular quality, and also low quality. You can also tweak some settings and make your own uh, quality or printer settings. So you can see it says custom profiles empty. We haven't made one yet. Um, and that's what we're going to do now. But I'm also going to teach you a little bit about what some of these settings are that ultimately affect how your print comes out. Um, as you get more experienced, you can add more settings in. Uh, again, for now, we're just starting with the basics. So under quality, this is overall um, the quality of your print. And that is based on layer height. So a program like Cura, why do you use this? Why can't you just take your 3D file and hit print? Well, the 3D printer needs to know what to print, and it also prints it in the layers. So it needs to know what exactly it's doing at each layer, how big the layer is gonna be, how fast you want it to print, how thick you want each layer to be, all this different stuff. So layer height right now is at 0.2 millimeters. All right, what is layer height? What does that mean? What's nice about Cura is if you put your cursor inside the dialog box, it'll actually tell you what this is. So in this case, layer height, right, is the height of each layer in millimeters. Higher values produce faster prints and lower resolution, and lower values uh, produce prints at higher resolution. Generally, your layer height is going to be half of what your nozzle diameter is. So we have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle diameter. We're gonna be using uh, 0.2 millimeters for our layer height. I could make that 0.1, I could make it 0.3, I could make it 0.4. At some point though, right, if I make it 0.8, you can see it's kind of lighting up orange a little bit, and it may start to warn you like, hey, you know, for your nozzle diameter, probably not gonna work out too well. All right, so we'll keep this. Let's go back and make it 0.2. There we go. Um, walls, this is just how thick the sides, right, the front, back, left, and right are going to be. Generally, your wall thickness is going to be double what your um, nozzle diameter is going to be. So you can see I have it set at the 0.8, number of walls, two. Um, again, you could change that. Um, top and bottom, right, again, kind of the same thing. What is the, the first two layers and the last two layers? How thick are they going to be? Right, again, standard is double your nozzle diameter. You could make that uh, larger, you can make it smaller. That's all determined on the quality of the print you want as well as how um, solid you want it to be, right? Or how strong you want it to be, depends on the application of what you're printing. Infill is how solid your object is. 20% is a pretty standard number. Um, if you want it to be less hollow, obviously you'd make it lower than 20. If you need it to be more solid or stronger, you can increase that number. Um, infill pattern um, does have an impact on the object that's being printed. Generally, grid or lines is a standard um, print uh, pattern. So I'll just put it at lines right there. Print material. So generally with PLA, there's a print temperature range as well as a build temperature range. So you may have to tweak these settings. Um, I know sometimes with PLA, people are printing around 210, 215 degrees Celsius. Um, build plate temperature could be around 60 degrees. So let's change those right now. Uh, generally, your filament spool will tell you what you're going to be, uh, or what your temperatures are. So just be conscious of that. Again, determine on the material that you are using. Uh, print speed, we'll just leave it at 50 for right now. It's kind of a standard speed. Uh, if you find that your print is just coming out really crummy, it's not adhering to the print bed, you may want to drop that number down. Uh, travel, we'll leave as is. Um, cooling, right? Uh, if you need to cool your print so that the layers solidify before it's moving on to the next layer, 
Um, you could turn on your fan speed. You could turn off the fan entirely. Um, you could set the fan to you know only reach a maximum speed. You'll have to play around um, with that as well. If your print has any overhangs, um, you're going to need uh, what's called a support. So you can generate supports. It's a temporary piece that'll hold the object up and you can snap it off when the print is done. Um, you can click generate support, support placement. I usually keep it everywhere, support overhang angle. You can make it larger than 45. I found that printers can kind of get away with almost a 60 degree angle before it needs a, a um, support. So we'll make that 60 degrees. That will ultimately affect also how long it takes to print as well as how much material is being used. So we'll leave that there. Um, and the last thing we're going to look at is build plate adhesion. So if your object doesn't have enough surface area um, on top of the print bed, you may need something to help it stick down. So you have a few different kinds here. Um, you have a skirt, a brim, a raft, or you could have nothing. So a skirt, right? If I, um, uh, if I click skirt, let's see, it should come up and tell you what it is. There we go. So build plate tower, right? Says different options that help to improve both uh, priming your extrusion and adhesion to the build plate. Brim adds a single flat layer uh, around the base of your model to prevent warping. A raft adds one thick layer uh, with the roof below the model and a skirt is just a printed line around the model that's not connected. So why would I want these? Sometimes a skirt is nice to kind of um, almost prime the nozzle and get rid of any loose filament that's there before printing your object. Brim is nice where it'll hold the object down. You may find that while you're learning to print, sometimes corners of the object can curl up um, and a brim will prevent that. And if you have an object that doesn't have a lot of surface area and needs to stick to your print bed, the raft would be the best option there. So I'm just gonna select in this case, brim. And those are my basic settings. There's plenty more here, but again, getting started, this is enough. Now, to make sure that I don't wanna do these settings again, I can click um, this little drop down arrow here next to standard quality, and it says create profile from current settings override. So I'm gonna click this, and I'm gonna call this, um, you know, quick tech tutorials settings. And I'm gonna hit okay. And now what's nice is this is in my custom profile. So everything I did is now saved. All right, and you can see now in my profile, Quick Tech Tutorial Settings is there. All right, uh, with all these settings, you can see my time and material jumped up a little bit. That's probably based on my supports and also having a brim. Uh, but two and a half hours to print this, 17 grams of filament. All right, um, I could preview the printer, the print uh, beforehand. Um, if I was going to save this to a disc and then plug it in, let's say an SD card, plug in the card to the printer, I could save it to the disc. If my printer was plugged in directly via USB, there would generally be a print button right here. Um, and your print is, uh, is good to go. So hopefully this is enough to get you started. Again, remember, this is a learning curve. There's a lot of settings uh, to learn, but it's also fun to kind of play around and see what works best for your printer, the object that you're printing, and the material that you're using. If you have any questions, leave in the comment below. And thanks for checking out Quick Tech Tutorials.